welcome back. Uh, a little technical glitch. This is Wayne Matson with the Wayne Matson Report coming to you live this January 22nd, 2011 from Washington, D.C. And the toll-free number, if you'd like to call the program, is 800-313-9443. That's 800-313-9443. I want to um, discuss what happened at the White House. Um, anyone who thinks Obama... Uh, he's a Democrat, uh, officially. That, that's the party he ran uh, under. Uh, he's really a corporatist. He's no different than George W. Bush. He's no different than, well, he's a little different than Bill Clinton, um, especially in the personal affairs department. But essentially, he's, he's owned lock, stock, and barrel um, by Wall Street, by the banks, by the oligarchs, by the elitists. We should have known during the campaign when he said, yes, I've noticed, Michelle and I have noticed the price of arugula has gone up. Well, how many people in the south side of Chicago eat arugula? Well, maybe they do around where he lived in Hyde Park, around the, the uh, campus of the Rockefeller founded University of Chicago. But a few blocks away from there, believe me, they don't know what arugula is. They're, they saw prices going up of you know, things like uh, 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 milk and bread and, and, and things like that, staples, not certainly not arugula. But, you know, we see it time and time again with Obama's detached. Um, he, he's really not interested in the working class in this country. He's never worked a day in his life. I mean, a real job. He worked for the CIA. He's been he's been nurtured. He's been taken care of. But I want to play this clip. Um, this is what. This is his answer to the, the, the destroyed economy. He had Hu Jintao, the Chinese president, over. Uh, but this was his answer to try to uh, recover the United States economy. He, he, he decided he was going to appoint uh, a new person to head up his council. It's a new name. The, council, it's the old Council of Economic Advisors. He changed the name. I think it's the Council of Economic Recovery. This is all uh, Orwell Newspeak. This is 1984 Newspeak. He, he's going to export, continue to export jobs to India. He probably cut a deal with Hu Jintao to export more jobs to China, noting some of the CEOs who were present there, Microsoft at the state dinner I'm talking about, the White House, Microsoft, Dow Chemical, of, of course, of Agent Orange infamy, uh, um, and a few other uh, big CEOs, Intel, so there goes more semiconductor manufacturing jobs to China. But let's listen to this clip. This is how Barack Obama decided he was going to uh, change his team at the White House to see an economic recovery. Listen who he put in charge. We can play this. U.S. President Barack Obama on Friday named Jeffrey Immelt chief executive officer of General Electric to chair a new economic advisor agency. The new Economic Advisory Agency is named Council on Jobs and Competitiveness. The assignation is Obama's latest move to throw an olive branch to the U.S. business executives and to bolster the nation's job creation efforts. Obama said at a GE plant in Schenectady, New York State, Jeffrey is one of the nation's most respected and admired business leaders, and that's a reputation he earned over 10 years at the helm of this company. The new council will take place of the president's Economic Recovery Advisory Board, an advisory panel composed of economists, corporate executives, and among others. It is currently chaired by former U.S. Federal Reserve Chief Paul Walker. Emmott was also a member of the Economic Recovery Advisory Board. Obama knows the Walker, who offered unvarnished advice, and he wasn't afraid to counter the conventional wisdom, had done a great service to the United States. Obama asked, the past two years were about pulling our economy back from the brink. The next two years, our job now is putting our economy into overdrive. Our job is to do everything we can to ensure that businesses can take root and folks can find good jobs, and America is leading the global competition. Well, isn't that nice? Isn't Obama the biggest phony in the world? So he cans Paul Volcker, who was the chairman of the Fed back during the, the Reagan uh, time period. Um, and uh, apparently Volcker had his own opinions on how to create jobs. It differed very much with 
with Obama. You know, Obama's trying to like uh, act like he's like Reagan now. Um, well, I, I, you know, Reagan now we know he had Alzheimer's while he was president. I don't know what Obama's problem is. He's he's not a dumb guy. Uh, certainly, he got the education. Maybe he is dumb, uh, but I think he's very ignorant. I don't think he listens to people. Um, I think he has his own uh, detached way of doing things. Um, but um, uh, let, let's okay. So he puts Jeffrey Immelt, the head of General Electric, one of the largest defense contractors, also in the United States, in charge of. Recovery. What what kind of jobs do you think they're going to look? Well, it's going to be probably in the defense industry. Uh, he's going to keep the wars going. Obama's going to keep the wars going in Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Pakistan. This warmonger president who's extended Bush's wars far beyond just Iraq and Afghanistan into other countries. This warmonger, Obama, who really is, is, is he's really more like a third world president uh, with, a, with a nuclear arsenal. The guy has absolutely, he doesn't seem to have any uh, affection or interest in his predecessors. Fifty years ago today, President Kennedy sworn into office. Fifty years ago, Eisenhower warning about the military-industrial complex. And what does Obama do? He puts one of the big tycoons in the military-industrial complex, Jeffrey M. Melton, in charge of um, economic recovery and jobs creation. My guy, can you imagine how ridiculous that is let's listen to what what happened in the obama uh circus right after uh this this ml thing we can play this clip Comcast, the country's largest cable company, has been given the green light to take over NBC. The Federal Communications Commission voted 4 to 1 Tuesday to let Comcast purchase a 51% stake in NBC Universal from General Electric. The Justice Department has also approved the deal. The cable giant will pay $13.8 billion in cash and assets for the network. The transaction is certain to transform the entertainment industry landscape as Comcast, with some 23 million cable subscribers, will now be a media powerhouse. Not only will it get the network, but Telemundo, 26 local TV stations, and cable outlets, including Bravo and Oxygen. Regulators are taking some precautions to prevent Comcast from trampling competitors, including requiring Comcast to make NBC programming available to rival cable companies. Diane Kepley, The Associated Press. Okay, so if, you, if you're, on the, if you're a, a, a liberal and a Democrat and you criticize this type of thing... Um, you, you you don't like where what Obama's doing, uh, cozying up to Wall Street, uh, appointing uh, Jeffrey Immelt, the head of General Electric, as the head of uh, his economic po- uh, uh, advisory group at the White House. You don't like that, and you start talking about it, um, and you happen to be a television commentator. Guess what happens? Let's listen to what happened after the Immelt decision to appoint Immelt. And, and a decision by Obama's friend, the FCC chairman, Jenna Chalsky, who was his roommate, by the way, at Harvard Law School. Uh, they leave that out. Uh, after Jenna Chalsky approved the, the buyout of uh, Comcast getting 51% of NBC, where GE is going to retain 49%. Uh, so what happens after these events? Let's listen to this. In a surprising move Friday night, Keith Olbermann announced he is leaving MSNBC and that Friday's countdown show was his last. MSNBC issued a statement it had ended its contract with the controversial host with no further explanation. Olbermann hosted the network's top-rated show, but his combative liberal opinions often made him a target of critics. He did not say why he was leaving. In November, he was suspended without pay from the network for two days after it right. came to okay, light that, that he had done that, we know why we know why Overman was fired because hey, you got you've got this new fascist construct now in charge of this country. The corporations control the media. The corporations control you. They control everything you do. They control everything you do all day long. And if you step out of line, the corporations are going to step on you like a bug. And they're going to squash you. Because this is now a fascist country. It's not the USA. It's the FSA. It's the fascist states of America. 
and I don't care how many tea but the tea baggers are fascists as, as as much as these corporate CEOs are. Just listen to their rhetoric. Corporations do no wrong. Ron Paul, oh, let the corporations do what they want. Nuts, they're all crazy. And we will be back to your phone calls right after this break. This is Wayne Madsen from Washington.